Hello everyone, I am Mr. Cheebs. As you can see, my camera position has changed a little since the last time we spoke, but fear not, as this tutorial series is just as put together and non-disjointed as ever. In this part, part numero three, we are going to be looking at flow objects so we can see what we can do with those as they're very integral to your fluid simulations. Now, let's just quit the rambling and hop into Blender. I've set up a simple scene with a domain object and a flow object right here in the middle. All the settings right now are the defaults, except for the domain's resolution, which I have increased so that we can have a bit of clarity. Now let's go to our flow object and start with the first option, the flow type. This controls what type of fluid will be generated from this flow object. The fluid will only appear if the flow object is inside a domain that matches its type. So you need a gas domain if you want smoke and fire, and you need a liquid domain for liquid. Smoke will also be generated when fire is present, so you will still get a bit of smoke when using the fire type. We'll learn how to control the amount of smoke that gets generated from fire later, when we go over domain settings in future videos. The flow behavior defines how the fluid will be introduced to the scene. Inflow generates fluid at a constant rate, rather like a torch or a faucet. Outflow removes fluid that comes into contact with the flow object. Selecting geometry will use the flow object as a pre-existing block of fluid. If this is set to inflow, we get this nice little toggle that we can turn on and off, so we could keyframe this with a right click to have our inflow turn on and off during the animation. When you play an animation in the viewport, it updates on each frame in the outliner. This can be a bit problematic for fast moving objects, as you can see with this little video. To fix this, Mantaflow can make calculations in between the frames, making fluid generation smoother. Each of these additional calculations is called a substep. You can define how many substeps to take in between frames with this sampling substeps value. I'd recommend leaving this as low as possible to save on bake times, but don't be afraid to increase it if you're having stuttering issues with your fluid generation. This next setting will only appear when using the smoke and fire plus smoke flow types. This gives the generated smoke a color attribute, so you can have two different flow objects, each emitting a different color of smoke, which can mix and swirl together. It looks really cool. These next four settings deal with smoke and fire, and they will only appear with the flow type that they would affect. Absolute density clamps the rate at which smoke is generated from the flow object. When toggled on, more smoke will only be produced if there is space available near or inside the flow object. If this is toggled off, smoke will be produced no matter what, not taking into account the density of the smoke that is already inside the flow object. Initial temperature defines the temperature of the generated smoke in comparison to the temperature of the world. Positive values will result in warm smoke, which will rise, and negative values will result in cooler smoke, which of course will sink. Density controls the density of the smoke. This should be pretty self-explanatory. The fuel value controls how much theoretical fuel is burned to generate fire. The higher this value is, the bigger the flames will be. And for some reason, this last setting is specific to gas flow types as well. It allows you to input a vertex group, so that fluid can be generated from specific parts of your object. Moving down the list here, we're going to open this flow source menu. This is where you control where the fluid is generated from. First off, we can change where the fluid will be generated, either a mesh or a particle system. The mesh option will generate particles from the object's geometry, whereas the particle option will generate smoke from a particle system applied to the flow source. When the flow source is set to mesh, you get three settings. The is planar toggle can be used when you have a flat mesh, such as a plane or circle, to give more accurate simulation behavior. In my experience, it's better to leave this off and use a non-planar mesh when possible, as that seems to make the simulation less finicky. The surface emission defines how thickly around the mesh smoke will be generated. This is calculated in domain cells, so a value of 2 will generate smoke out to 2 cells from the surface of the mesh.
From what I've seen, no smoke will be generated if this value is below 0.25. The volume emission value is how much smoke will be generated from the inside of your flow object. The particle system settings are a bit more simple. First, we are given a field in which to select the particle system to generate smoke from. Then, we can decide whether to use this set size toggle or not. If this is toggled on, then the size value here will define how many cells away from the particle will be filled with smoke. This functions rather like the surface emission value from earlier. If the set size toggle is disabled, then the particle will just fill the nearest cell of the domain with smoke. This initial velocity dropdown allows us to give our smoke some force. It only works if the initial velocity is toggled on. The source value is how much velocity is inherited from the flow object, so it only works if the flow object is animated. I really love this setting. Normal gives the smoke velocity from the surface normals of the flow object. All you really need to know about normals for this is that it will emit perpendicular to the object faces. And initial x, y, and z all cause velocity along their respective axes. These velocity values can be negative as well, so make sure to experiment with that. This last menu, Texture, can be used to give a bit of variation to the smoke generation. Of course, it only works if texture is toggled on. If you either import or generate a texture under that tab in the context menu, you can select it in this texture field. You can switch the mapping between generated and UV, either using generated UV coordinates or the manual ones you would find under the UV editing workspace. When this is set to generated, you get a size option to provide some control over the texture, whereas in UV mode, you get a box where you can select the UV map to use. Offset moves the texture along the Z axis, so you can try changing that if the result isn't exactly what you want. So if you need a bit of randomness, you can use those texture settings. For anything specific though, I'd really recommend using a vertex group and just selecting specific faces for the smoke to be emitted from. Now then, we've looked at gas flow objects, let's tackle liquids. Switching the type, we can see that the task isn't actually so daunting. All these settings are things that we've already looked at, just applied to liquids instead of gas. All the same settings also apply when you switch from an inflow to a geometry flow behavior, so that's pretty nice and easy. And as for outflows, they are the simplest of the bunch. We get the flow source setting with mesh as the only option. We also have the planar option from before, the surface emission to define how far out the fluid will be removed from the scene. Honestly, outflows are pretty simple. Any fluid within the area taken up by the outflow or within the surface emission area will be removed. And to be honest, when you look at these settings as a whole, it's not as scary as all the things within this video would make it seem. You've got stuff to control if the gas rises or sinks, stuff to control how much gas there is, stuff to control the fluid's direction, and a few other things sprinkled in here and there for random debugging stuff. That's about it. Nice job, everybody. Our next couple of videos are going to be looking at domain objects, as there's a ton of stuff we can mess with there. If you're not, I'll break it all down just like today, and it will be easy peasy once we're done. Subscribe so you don't miss those next few videos. Have a great day. I will see you in the next one.